I think it's fair to say that the popular media is sometimes confused about EVs. In some articles I read about electric vehicles, there are factual mistakes, misinterpretations of what an EV actually is, and generalities that might apply to one class of electric vehicle architectures that don't apply to others. So what is an EV? In a formal sense, an electric vehicle uses an electric motor and an electric power source to propel the vehicle. But that leaves a number of open questions. Is the power source only a battery? Can an internal combustion engine be present to supplement the battery? If so, how do the battery, the electric motor, and ice work together? The answers to these questions are no, yes, and in a variety of ways, respectively. But that doesn't tell the whole story. EV purists believe that an EV should never, ever include an internal combustion engine. And it's an understandable point of view. But for technical and marketing reasons, the automotive world doesn't make such clear distinctions. EVs are characterized more broadly. Let's take a look at the variants. In part one of our discussion of EV architecture, you learn that the purest form of EV is the battery electric vehicle. The BEV uses only an electric motor and rechargeable battery to power the car. But there are other architectures that are often referred to as electric vehicles. Plug-in hybrid electric vehicles called PHEVs use a combination of an electric motor a battery, and an internal combustion engine to power the car. Within the PHEV category, we have the series hybrid that uses an ICE to power a generator that charges the battery, passing electricity to an electric motor that transmits power to the drive wheels. We also have a parallel hybrid, which uses an ICE and an electric motor to provide power to a transmission that transmits that power to the drive wheels. Finally, we have a series parallel hybrid. This uses a drivetrain that combines both approaches with either the ICE or the electric motor or both in service at any given time. Finally, there's a fuel cell vehicle, FCEV that derives electric power from a hydrogen fuel cell that can, that can transmit power directly to an electric motor or to the battery. We considered the BEV earlier in part one of this mini course, but let's recap. As I've mentioned, the BEV is powered solely by a rechargeable battery. Battery capacity varies significantly among BEVs. Small capacity vehicles sometimes referred to as city cars, typically have less than 30 kilowatt hour batteries and a range that is in the neighborhood of 100 miles. Larger capacity vehicles today, only the Tesla Model S falls into this category, have 60 kilowatt batteries or larger and a range of 200 to 300 miles. PHEVs are electric vehicles. After all, they do use electricity and they do have a battery, but they also make use of an internal combustion engine. An internal combustion engine is used because it eliminates what we call range anxiety, concern about the limited capacity of the battery to provide enough vehicle range. We'll discuss range anxiety in another EVU mini course. In any event, all PHEVs use gasoline or another fossil fuel and electricity from the grid to operate. The real differentiating factors are how the electric motor and the ice are used to power the car and to what extent the battery plays a role. Let's take a tabular look at BEVs and PHEVs and try to understand how they operate. Although each EV variant comes in different flavors, even within its category, it's worth trying to summarize. 
Each of the variants is listed across the top row of the table you see on your screen. For each of the EV variants, this table addresses whether a battery is present within the EV variant, whether an internal combustion engine is used as part of the architecture, whether regen is used, whether the ice is used to provide force to directly drive the wheels, and whether the ice is used to recharge the battery. Pause this video if you'd like to take a longer look at the table. And note that for every cell in the matrix, it's possible to find an exception. Another way to look at PHEVs is to consider their modes of operation. In charge depleting mode, the vehicle operates exclusively on battery power. This mode often occurs at low speed for a PHEV. As an aside, a BEV operates solely in charge depleting mode, regardless of its speed. Blended mode is used when the vehicle does not have enough battery power to sustain high speed and must call on the internal combustion engine for help. In this mode, the battery can still be called upon to supplement the ice, providing better overall fuel economy. Charge sustaining mode controls the use of the battery, the ice, and regen to ensure that the battery charge remains within a given range. And mix mode uses some combination of the other modes. On any given trip, the speed of the vehicle and the distance travel will dictate the mode of operation. For example, a PHEV that travels a few miles at low speed would use charge depleting mode, but on an interstate at higher speed, it would use blended mode instead. It's important to understand that even within one PHEV architecture, the application of these modes of operation will vary from vehicle to vehicle. Today, PHEVs are the most common EV. All make use of an internal combustion engine and incorporate the added complexity associated with ICE. There's also the complexity associated with coordinating the operation of the two different power sources, the ICE and the electric motor. All PHEVs use gasoline or another uh, fossil fuel. All produce emissions but they can also achieve emission-free driving for short distances. And all PHEVs are energy efficient. But as battery technology continues to improve, it's likely that the added complexity of the PHEV will cause the architecture to be replaced by the BEV. Time will tell. Let's summarize what we've discussed. Many EV variants exist, and some use an ICE as well as a battery. The BEV uses only a battery, is the simplest, and some would argue the purest form of EV. The PHEV uses both a battery and an ICE and is implemented in a number of different architectures. The FCEV generates electricity on board the vehicle and represents new technology that does have promise. In part three of our discussion of architecture, we take a look at the system diagrams for each of the architectural variants.